commitment. Glad to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Amen.
if you need him today. Oh, yeah. I need him every day. Amen. Lord, I come. I'm Do something.
here a little bit. Uh, I pray you enjoyed Sunday school this morning. Amen. Amen. I like having hot Sunday school. Yeah. Amen. Well, Jesus is in it. And I appreciate it. Preacher Tommy, let the Lord use him. Um, I, I, I want to give you a verse, and if it be all right with Rob, we'll, we'll sing, Lord, I need you one more time. Um, there might be some folks here this morning. I know this is on my heart. There might be some folks here this morning who need help from God, might need comfort, might need strength, might need to just cry on the shoulder a little bit, might need to ask him for some help. I want to let you know that all of us are open. Um, and I, I want to remind you, Every human needs help from God. Amen. 2 Corinthians would pin it down this way. Apostle Paul sought the Lord out for an infirmity that he had in the flesh, a problem yeah. that he had in his flesh. And he said, Lord, I just keep praying. I just keep praying. And nothing keeps changing. Nothing keeps changing. What Apostle Paul didn't realize was what he was doing was working. Yeah. You seeking out God, whether it's helping or not, it's helping. I, I steal this from Preacher Golden. Lord help. He's helping. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I want to encourage you. Apostle Paul keeps telling the Lord, Lord, I keep seeking your face and nothing's working. Jesus would reply from heaven, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. My strength is made perfect in your time of weakness. Yeah. I want to encourage you this morning. If there's anybody here, you just need help. You need to call on the Lord. The altars are open. Not because you're bad, not because you're good, but because you're human. Amen. Let's sing. It'll be all right. Let's stand. It'll be fine. Let's stand this morning. Don't worry. We ain't done. We ain't done. You're fine. You stand. Folks might need help this morning. You want to worship him because you need him. You ought to.
respond to that. I, I told Brother Waveland on the phone last night, I said, I'm real excited to get back to the church. I said, whatever Jesus wants to do, I'm mighty fine with it. If, if it's a morning, and, and, and I want to say this to you, there's, there's a difference in preaching and ministry. Yeah. Preaching is the gospel, is the power of God and the salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's the gospel, it's the preached message. Ministry is when you let what's between the lids of those books affect your life and change it. Jesus fasted for 40 days and afterward he was 100 and the angels came and ministered unto him. I, I want to encourage you so much this morning, church. I feel like it's a different morning. Um, I want to encourage you so much. Don't let God just sing to you. Don't let God just preach to you. Let Him minister to you. Amen. Amen. Let grace happen. Let grace change you. Let the compassion of the Lord change you. We are living in such a such a religious day that you mention things like let grace happen, let worship happen, let tears happen, let hands raised happen, let knees bend happen. And it sounds like contemporaryism. But I, I declare to you, God wants more from His church than just singing and preaching. Amazing grace isn't amazing unless you let it be amazing to you. Worship, it's just a schedule unless you let worship happen to you. Let, and I, I apologize, I don't have any better way to put it. Let Jesus happen to you this morning. Say, worship, you need to be seated. You can be.
something and, and we'll let the church testify or whatever we're going to do. Book of Exodus. This, this is fresh off the press. This ain't got to be studied up and pointed up. This is fresh off the press. Book of Exodus. Moses, the children of Israel have argued with each other. The children of Israel are talking about quitting on God. And Moses would ask them this question. Is the Lord amongst us or not?
Amen. Y'all had any heat chips in your life? I know where God brought me from. I've been sitting. And I'm just telling you. Hey, man, I ain't going back there, Larry. God's brought me too far, Miss Karen, to turn back now. Ooh, I believe I'll just keep marching. And if it's in a circle, I want God to know around and I ain't going back to Egypt. Woo! If I have to struggle, I ain't going back to Egypt. I'm clear church. It's time to look at Egypt and look at God and say, Lord, if you'll go with me, I'll go all the way. If you'll go with me into the end, I believe I'll go with you to the end. I'll die on this hill. And this hill is called Calvary. I'm done preaching, but I ain't nowhere near done worshiping. <laughs>
lead the worship. Y'all go ahead. Okay, so I've had a scripture on my heart since this is for research. I can't seem to get it off my heart. Go for it. Study around the Easter card and the tie into our Sunday school. And it's yes, in Matthew 27, where it says, Pilate's alive, come to him with a message. It said, have nothing to do with this innocent man. All I can think about uh, is not, is not what Pilate did necessarily or, or the message itself, but it's, it's the sense of responsibility that his wife must have had, must have found in that moment, but to take the time in the moment of, a, of, his, of his trial and to send her, her husband a message. I want to know to say, write this down and take it to him. And I want to just for a minute. I, I, I can't get this off my mind, but what Pilate must have felt, brother. Yeah. When he turned from the crowd, I was saying, crucify him, crucify him, and he raised his nose. Amen. Have nothing to do with this innocent man. Amen. From the one closest to him. Amen. I wonder what he must have felt in that moment. Yeah. When he, when he felt his guilt, you see, he knew he also was convinced and knew that he was an innocent man. Amen. And I thought, what if God put it in writing? We always wonder, we look for the sign, we want to know, and then when it happens, it'll happen. Uh, uh, but what if he puts it in right? Amen. He put it in right for Pilate. Some say, oh, I was saying it was his plan. Uh, he, he was trying to ruin salvation for the world. But she sends the responsibility. Yes, sir. You see, uh, the Bible doesn't say much about her. Yeah. It doesn't say much. I think the only place in Scripture that even mentions her. Uh, but I know through history that uh, some say she was a granddaughter of an emperor Augustus, which tells me uh, she had a good familiarity uh, with Jewish tradition. Yes, sir. Amen. She knew what she was doing. Some I... say she became a Christian. I don't know. Uh, but she acted on her impulse to say, don't follow this innocent man. Amen. No But I think of the act that she took to write it down and say sin is to him. Yeah. And I'm thankful this morning that, that God cared enough about me uh, in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, yeah, well, in the midst of my sin. Uh, uh, to not just tell me, uh, but to write it on my heart. Amen. He wrote it down. Oh, and he put it on scrolls, he yeah. put it on stone, yeah. he put it on tablets, and he put it right in my heart. Amen. What is he putting on yours? Pilate yeah. would have never received that message if his wife did not sin. Amen. Today we have a Savior. We have a church. We have friends and family that are doing their darkest to send you the message. If you stop and take a moment, turn from the crowd and read it. Amen. Amen. You feel probably much the same thing Pilate felt when his heart sank to his feet. Don't fall into the, the, the temptations of this world because there's a world full of people saying, I crucify him, crucify him. I stay out of church. I got no business with that nonsense. It's plain. Wow. It's written on the walls. Yeah. It's written on the cross with our Savior's blood. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
still turn and deliver the crucified. I wonder what he felt when he went. I wonder how he felt about his decision. I wonder what his wife felt. I tried my best. I tried my best and he didn't listen. I guess I'm not educated enough to know exactly what happened to each of you one of them. But I can tell you that the Bible tells me what little I know about Pilate's wife. I know in history in Greece they, they, they consider her a saint. Why? Because she acted upon Christ. Amen. And she did what was right, knowing that those who she was doing for her were probably not listening. Amen. Well, I just had that thought. What if you quit it running? Yeah. I look around. Not even just my Bible, but you look around and read the pitch. Yeah. You see all those thoughts we get, all those, all those times we sin, we ponder it, and we know we're doing the right wrong thing, and we know Christ is innocent, we know we shouldn't be doing this. We keep those words flash right in front of our eyes. How do we see it? Because they're written in our heart. Amen. We put them there. Amen. They put them there. Now, when you got in those situations, you can see them. And you know they were His words. Amen. His
we don't live together. But I need you. Yeah.
Man, I, I was a stubborn little kid, sure was. I told my Sunday school teacher, I said, hey, I need to be saved. I was weeping. I need to be saved. They packed all of me in that Sunday school classroom. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I just sat there and watched them pray. And they they were praying people. Everybody all right? We're okay. Yeah. I know we're talking simple, but I believe it's fine. And, and, and they were praying hard. I, I can still hear my Uncle Ben just beating the floor. Please save Chase. Please save Chase. We got done praying. Uncle Ben looked at me and he said, Chase, how do you feel? And I said, Uncle Ben, I'm lost. But I had, Miss Patty, I had seen so many people go to the altar. And I'd seen them, Miss Tasha, just, just like you, come down with tears and come up with help. I'd seen it. And there's not a bit of power, Miss Nancy, in that altar, not a bit. But I knew there was a God that meet me there. And I said, Uncle Ben, I said, I'd like to go to the altar and I'd like to pray. And Uncle Ben said, if you want it, go after it. And he let a seven-year-old boy lead the way to the altar. And when I hit that altar, I gave God every bit of fear of hell that I had. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, peace came real in my soul. Amen. I got saved before half of them had time to get down. Right. <laughs> my dad was still on his way down. And I popped up. <laughs> And Uncle Ben just looked at me. And I said, Uncle Ben, I ain't going to hell. <laughs> I want to encourage you with all my heart, with all my soul. I didn't understand everything as a seven-year-old boy. No seven-year-old does. No 12-year-old does. No 13-year-old does. No full-grown adult understands everything about Jesus Christ. Right. But I understood enough to know that I needed him. Amen. If there's anybody here this morning... And I believe it would be okay to have invitations. Surely I do. But is anybody here this morning, it's when you've went from interest, you've went from heart beating, you've seen all the shout, the rejoicing, but you're ready to be saved. You're ready to know where you're going, when you die. You're ready to get out of hell. And hey, I'll, I'll give you this. I didn't pray with Rob if you would. Come on, my friend. I, I didn't pray with it, Miss Nancy. I, I literally, the Bible said that it's biblical from the abundance of the heart his mouth will speak. When I knelt here, Brother Randy, when I, when I knelt, Larry, I broke my heart right in front of him. And I wept until peace came around my soul. Does anybody here need to be saved? It's good morning. It's good morning. God bless you so much. Let's stand, if you would. <laughs>
It's revival time. Yeah. Sure is. Revival means the world to me. You know that. But I, I'll say this. Revival is so hard to means the world to me. Uh, first time I met this church was in revival. Pastor Bob and I talked and came to the revival meeting. Uh, that was extremely special to Chase Flesh Hour got saved right there. Amen. And at that time, Scott was in touch with his birth family. You remember that? Yes, sir. And uh, I thought that was the most incredible thing, um, knowing my story. And there, there's somebody up there at that church that's got a little bit of the same thing. I love that. Hey, listen, folks, I, I'm telling you one more time. Heavens want to do something to revive this week. Yeah. I mean, it, we need to be much in prayer for the men of God. We need to be much in prayer for tonight's service. How many of you enjoyed th this morning's meeting? Amen. God bless you. Hey, guess what? We're going to come back, and we're going to hit the repeat button tonight. <laughs> Amen. So if anybody's interested in that, y'all come back at 5 o'clock. And then we're going to hit the repeat button tomorrow night at 7, and the next night at 7, and the next night at 7, and the next night at 7. But on that, on that... Uh, 6, 7, we're not going to start at 7 on Saturday, we're going to start at 6. We're going to start at 6. Uh, got a lot of folk coming in, Richie's giving me two thumbs up, so we should be good to go. Should be good to go. Uh, I said this this morning, we'll say it to you again, uh, we've got visitors coming in, and I thank God for that. We've got visiting churches, because I promise every time God wants to revive a local church, He wants to revive His church. But please do not overlook God sending her out with us. It's people would be here. It's people. Is that okay? <laughs> Amen. I ain't preaching church attendance. I'm just telling you, God wants to help What a blessing. What a blessing. Anybody got anything before we close?